What's up, y'all? Welcome to The Art of Creating Yourself by Around Our Hype, where artists and creators alike get to share the unique perspectives about how they create every day. Here we got KD, the poet. The poet for short, KD for short. What's up, my guy? How you feeling today? Bro, how you living? Good, bro. I appreciate you having me on here, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. Always love to spotlight people doing their things, and I see you. I see you. I right? appreciate it, bro. We like to let the guests give their full introduction, so I'm gonna go ahead and lob it up to you, and you gonna tell us what it is and what it feels like. Yes, sir, bro. I go by Katie the Poet. You feel me? I'm out of Berkeley, California. Also, you feel me? Pittsburgh too, as well. You feel me? Shout out to all my people from both sides. You feel me? Uh, you feel me? Yeah, I've been making music for about five years now. You feel me? So I'm still, I'm still pretty fresh in it, but you know, we definitely still at it. You know. And yeah, you know. That's what's up. That's what's up. You say you're from Berkeley. Yes, I don't think we've had anybody from Berkeley yet. I've been, I've been around Berkeley, but, <laughs> you know, I don't really know about uh, the music culture in Berkeley. So I'm about to ask you about that. But before we do that, you brought a picture. You brought a picture for us today, right? Yes, sir, bro. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what this picture is? Uh, yeah, bro. So the picture, I mean, it's pretty short and sweet, bro. That's actually my uh, grandmother's house out in Berkeley. You feel mm -hmm. me? This is, and it's significant. I chose it specifically because it's a, uh, that's where pretty much I grew up. You feel me? Like if I wasn't at my mm -hmm. house, you feel me? With moms and my siblings, I, we were there. You feel me? With grams and my auntie and everybody. So, I mean, I was just, it's a lot of memories packed into there. You feel me? And memories bring on these lyrics that y'all get. So it's super important. You know what I'm saying? It's a huge part for me. Still go back there. You feel me? Graham still live there, you know? So it's, it's definitely still in the family and it's always going to be important. So I feel like this was the best option. You feel me? There's no better pick than this one. That's what's up. That's what's up. Then. And I just had uh, Pusey on, right? And he brought a picture of his grandma. Yeah. House. And he was like, yeah. he was talking Shout about like the Pusey. same thing. So it's just like, we was talking about just how much of a staple, you know, like black grandmothers are to the community. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, grandma's house was like, grandma's house was like a hug personified you feel me like you feel me like that that's that's what it felt like to walk into grandma's house before you got the actual hug from grandma just walking into grandma's house yeah. the hug you so you feel like that shit was like no nah, like yeah. you know, it, black black grandmothers were a staple in the family you feel me not just black grandmothers but you know you feel me grandmothers are a staple mm -hmm. of the families bro you feel yeah. me? Like they, nine times out of ten they hold the things together you know what i'm saying yep <laughs> There's a lot of responsibility to being a grandmother these days, you know. <laughs> you gotta make sure you hold that. that man I wouldn't take it up. personally. So. <laughs> Shout out to the grandma. Bro. He said, "I'm not built for it. Somebody <laughs> else, somebody else do it, but I'm not built for it." No, nah, that's real. Um, but yeah, you out of Berkeley, California. So I was born in Berkeley. For me, I was for about like uh, four or five years. For you, feel me? I moved out to Pittsburgh. You feel me? Stayed out there for about, I probably stayed out there for like five of them things too, and then moved to Antioch. So you feel me? I've been in like three, three different cities for the most part, you feel me, in my life where I stayed yeah. for major time. You feel me? Uh -huh. that, like, I spent my, my younger years in Berkeley, you feel me? And as I went into like elementary school and shit like that, that's when I moved out to Pittsburgh and whatnot. So you feel me? I don't have my, my fair share of experience with different places, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. So. You, you can claim both. I, I give you permission to be a baby. Yeah, like, yeah, like, <laughs> people, people I ask, I definitely make sure to specify. I'm like, born, you feel me, in Berkeley for sure. But, you yeah. know, I, I get a whole rundown. Born. You feel me, to some uh, people, it's important. And it's important to me in the, in the sense of, you know, having pride in where you're from. But at the same time, not it's not important to me for the reasons that it's important to some people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And there's, like a, mm -hmm. there's a whole world out there, too. You know, like, it's the Bay. And we're here nice. to celebrate the bay and nice. spotlight the bay, but there's other there's other places to be going, you know? And just to realize how great the bay is, you know? Mm -hmm. I always come back to the bay. <laughs> always bring it back to home. There's no place like home. Now, yeah, bro, I'm telling you, bro, like, it's, that's that's why, you feel me, I, I don't never get caught up too much in the whole, you feel me, where you from or where you, because honestly, bro, it's too much world to even be caught up in just a place you don't came from, bro. I'm trying to see other people, too. Mm. And I think you were talking about, matter of fact, I think you are talking about that it's a lot of world out here, you feel me? And I said that's a yeah. big reason why I don't get caught up in the whole where you from. 
because I'm not trying to get caught up in just where I <laughs> where I've been before. You feel me? It's world to see still, you know? Like yeah. it, it's a lot of world to see. Mm -hmm. Many places to see, many places to see. Now I kinda wanna bring it to like the uh Sorry. creative and artistic mentality behind like some of the art you make, right? So what would you say to you is the relationship between storytelling and actually like song writing? Um, I think it's, I think it's very like, depends on the individual, you feel me, artists that we're specifically talking about. Cause like, you know, for me, I feel like the two are like, I think they go hand in hand. You feel me? Cause mm -hmm. I think, I think, you know, how can I say? I think like the storytelling and wanting to be better at that, it challenges my writing. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I wholeheartedly, like when I'm about to do a track that's storytelling, I, I, I want to sit down and do my best writing, you know, cause that's when you're doing something that's a storytelling track, you're trying to literally put the listener in your shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like you want them to feel as if they done lived through this day that you are rapping about, you know? So, I mean, that's, like I said, that's when I want to sit down and challenge myself the most and really try to write my best, like, my most in-depth bars and my most in-depth, you know, writings in general, you know? So I feel like the two kind of go hand in hand. But on the flip side, I think there are people who, uh, how can I say, might not be the best writers in general, you know, overall big picture thing, but you know, mm -hmm. they can tell a story, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. Saying? yeah. that's interesting too, because I think songwriting in itself is underrated. Right. It's really hard to teach somebody how to write a good song. Bro, I'm telling you, and people people really like people are asleep on how hard it is to really write some consistently write, you know, good music, bro. Like anybody can sit down and write something that they think is but bro, like to sit down and consistently push out good music, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And not only if it's music for yourself, I'm talking if, if you're an artist writing for yourself, I'm talking if you're writing for other people regardless bro it is hard to, to to write good music you know what i'm saying that's not something that is to be taken lightly if it's something you really want to do you feel me at all at all and it's like the the difference really starts to show when people start to do things like covers right um you can do a cover of somebody else's like a professional that everybody knows like oh you know i did a cover of i don't know miguel mm -hmm. right or I don't know if you want to bring it to rap. I did a right. cover to like, I don't know, a Kendrick, a J. Cole, a Jay-Z, right? A Nas. And I literally rap what they rap, right? But it's their words, their storytelling, mm -hmm. right? And that's, I feel like people can have talent. And that's how you know when talent shows. But then when it comes to like their own music and they're like, oh yeah, this is, I'm going I'm to do a cover and then I'm going to do exactly my own song right after. I'm going to do an original. Then you start to see the difference of, oh, you're Bruh. talented, but you know, your, you, your story writing yeah. or your your songwriting might not be there yet, you know? Bruh. The way I like to put it, bro, I feel like it's like a I feel like it's a huge difference between talented, you feel me, and, and gifted. You feel me? You can mm. be you can be talented in every aspect, but you that don't make you you feel me? You can be a talented in every aspect of the music itself. You feel me? You can have a the turn aspect of it. You could, you feel me, be the most popular, whatever the case, bro. But that don't make you a gifted writer. You feel me? And then, like you said, it, it truly shows when when you got to sit down and put the pen to use. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bro? I don't know. I just feel I was having this discussion with one of my um, homies yesterday, and it was like, there's just, no, I don't think anybody can teach you how to write a good song. Like, I think you honestly have to. Right. right and just keep writing and find your bag right and keep keep evolving your bro, bag until you find it i kid you not bro how often i actually have to have this conversation is crazy because what people like to throw around at me bro it's bro like you you feel me you you make this shit look effortless bro i'm like <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's truly not bro and it took a minute to get here bro you yeah. feel like like bro, or even like the artists who are like trying to find their way into it you feel me and I asked me, you know, like, oh, you know, I just, I just want to have my writing on this, this. I'm like, bro, repetition, bro, consistency, bro. Like, you literally got to sit down and write, bro. Like, you can't, <laughs> and not to say, you feel me, you can't take breaks from it or whatever, but you literally yeah. got to sit down and do it, bro. Like, when I was first starting and, and shit, bro, like, 
bro, I'm sitting down. If any free time I have, I was sitting down writing. You feel me? I'm in high school. I'm in class writing. You feel me? Paying, supposed to be paying attention, and I'm writing in my notes, bro. Like <laughs> listening to beats in my headphones. You feel me? Like you really got to sit down and do it. Just working on the craft. Working on the craft. Right. So I mean, mm-hmm. I personally, like I was saying, I personally don't think there's a blueprint, like. Or even like a structure foundation to writing a hit song or writing a good song. Right. I think it excuse me, I think it has to come through literally experience and working on your craft. But to you, I'm gonna I'm gonna pose the question to you. Oh. <laughs> what do you think? Is there a blueprint to okay, you need two verses, a bridge, you know, and a fire hook, and it has to be two and a half minutes. Oh, bro. I really, I truly don't think that, bro. Like, I, I truly think, bro, it's all like situational, bro. Like, there's certain like, and and there's many factors that play into it, bro. Like, factors as as basic but important as the beat, bro. Like, you feel me? Certain beats could call for you feel me a a bridge somewhere here. You feel me? Two mm-hmm. verses. Sometimes it might be a one verse. Or it literally just depends, bro. You feel me? And, and like I said, I really don't think there's a a formula or a blueprint to be followed you feel me like like we said earlier bro and i think most people would be agreeing on it at least people who write themselves it's like you literally got to find your bag bro you feel me like there's no there's no guidelines to it bro it ain't no step by step bro like you literally got to sit down and find what works for you and make it work even better and then eventually evolve like you got to keep trying to progress with it bro do you think that there is value in then differentiating your bag right like Maybe you notice the industry is going this way, or you notice, you know, a lot of people are doing this. Do you think there's value in literally doing the opposite because everybody's doing else? Everybody else is doing the same thing. I uh, personally, bro, like for one, I think, and I had to. It took me a minute to learn this too. I, I might add, you feel me? So this is not me saying it from a point of like I always knew this, <laughs> but like I definitely think that's super important to like be able to differentiate and have and have multiple bags you could get in you feel me like that's just at this point it's kind of like a necessary evil as far as trying to be in the industry trying to do music but like you can't one sound don't get you nowhere you feel me like mm-hmm. it is I, I don't want to call it unfortunate but it is you know to some depending on who you ask it's a negative that somebody can't stick to their niche and you know that'd be fine you feel me like now you got gritty gritty artists you feel me rappers you feel me having to do melodic shit just just to you know to stay afloat you feel me like for being a honey you know but but not to stay away from the from the main point which is that you feel me uh is 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 damn near uh necessary like you gotta you gotta be able to be in different bags bro and as far as that in correlation with like trends in the industry bro you gotta be able to find that you gotta be able to distinguish that blurred line bro because you feel me at what point is it trying to sharpen your sword, you feel me, and get better at the craft as opposed to riding with, you feel me, popping right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's it's a blurred line, bro. You feel, <laughs> a lot of people cannot distinguish it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because it's a balance, but you also, you want to stay true to yourself, but you also understand that mm-hmm. music is an art and art evolves over time, right? And art gets different Fact. influences through what's going on in the culture and, you know, the grand scheme, what's going on in the world. So you got to evolve with the times or, mm-hmm. you know, your art might get left behind to the masses. Bro, and even on, the, even on the flip side of that too, bro, like the artists ourselves, pe- us as people are changing daily. You feel me? You feel me? So like, to put it in words, you're not going to always want to make music about the same shit because you're not going to always be going through the same stuff. You feel me? Like, you feel me? things could drastically change in either direction. You feel me? You could get a lot better for you or a lot worse. But either way, like, you feel me? It's not it's not the norm for your, your art to stay here and always be here. You feel me? Like, it's either going... You feel me? It, ain't, it really ain't no in between. You feel me? You can be here for a second, but you feel me? At some point, you got to make something shake. Yeah. Right? And like I said, that's the norm, bro. You, I don't, a lot of people are scared to do do different stuff, though. You feel me? So I mean, I don't know, bro. It really depends on when you, when you, as an artist, are ready to take that leap, bro. Because I've been gradually over these last couple of years, kind of like trying to beat into my own head. They're like, bro, you gotta you got to switch it up a little bit. You feel me? And it ain't nothing wrong with it, you know? Yeah. 
and that's something I used to I used to focus on a lot in the early days of this um, podcast platform. Like I used to focus on the fact that artists are like people first. Like you, you still like you're still a human being. You're still like you know going through human being stuff. Like life just still get in the way. It has to get in the way. That's part of it. That's part of living as a human. Right? <laughs> and so your art literally has to evolve because your life is evolving. Because nothing's ever just gonna stay the same. Only thing. Only thing no for uh-huh. fact is change. Change has to come. So it's like you rock right. with it or you know, you let it change you. And that's what it is. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, bro. It's, you know, it ain't no in between with it, bro. You just gotta you know you either adapt or you don't, bro. And if you don't, bro, you feel me, the art is not gonna it's not gonna prevail, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's literally a part of uh, making this music stuff as much as like people don't want to or as much as people are in denial about it like you you got to change with the times too you feel me obviously change at your pace and how at the pace that you're changing as a person and as an artist but like the old saying says get with the mm-hmm. times you feel me like and you got to do that regardless it's a necessary evil bro i think as like an audience I think people are torn about it like 50 50 like i i personally like to see artists evolve right if i listen to a project and it's the exact same mm-hmm. as the last project i almost get offended like <laughs> i knew you could mm-hmm. do this right you you did this two years ago you showed me you could do this i'm trying to see what happened in the last two years like how you you know got better like changed in the last two years and how you maybe style wise maybe life wise like whatever show me something different Cause I already got the last shot. It's it's two years old. Right. Like people, I mean, I understand shit gets recycled, but like it's two years old. I can still play that if I wanted to. Show me like what you're doing now. No, thanks. You know, then like the other half. Mm-hmm. You know, on the other side of the coin, people are like, I loved his last shit, and now he switched it up, and I don't like his new shit. And I'm like, ah, I, I can kind of see that point Bruh. too. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> It's, it's like one of those it's one of those uh points where it's like decisions decisions bro because mm-hmm. it's like you feel me i either take this leap and not know if they're gonna be receptive to it or i'll stay comfortable in my lane and you feel me and i can only go 10 miles per hour you feel me you feel me and i'm and i'm treading lightly you feel me every every song got dropped because i don't want folks to you know because it's like yeah like you said you i mean it's it, you put it the best as far as it being 50 50 bro you feel me like you got you got people who will want to see things change you feel me want to see you maybe coming a whole completely different way do you have but you got other people who like and just to even get in the middle of my own cut myself off bro you can't please everybody as an artist you feel me because i i gotta play devil's advocate but i also gotta side with my artists too in which bro you you have to make what you like bro you have like to. That's another, and we can talk about we we could talk about that more at some point too. But like that is probably the biggest part of me too. Like you gotta you gotta find that that line between you feel me. Like we said, doing what's popping and making, progressing as an artist, and like doing what you uh what you like genuinely. You feel me? Like a lot of people are making their what they think is their best music right now. You feel me? And it's off of them trying to do what they think people would like. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, it's like, do you like this song, bro? Do you <laughs> like this music, bro? Nine, it, it's not. It's not even to say it's bad or anything, but it's like you feel me. I can like, like I could, I could make some stuff and like you would know the difference. I'm like, bro, like this ain't you, bro. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Heart like, in it. and even if you are going to switch it up, with, um, you know, some different lane type of type of stuff. You feel me? You still got to stay true to it in the message. You feel me? Like. Even when I make make other what, what people would consider other lane stuff for me, like it's definitely still like it has a relatively like straightforward and uh it's not no cap shit, you feel me, for lack of a better word. You feel me? Like the message yeah. is still there, bro. You know, like it's it's not like, oh, I'm trying to do something different, so I'm about to change my whole subject matter and I'm about to you feel me, cap my ass off, you know, <laughs> so it could sound more industry. Yeah. Like, you would have to, now that I think about it, like, if you were to go in a completely different bag, like, the storytelling and the songwriting for these different bags are different. Like, you can't approach, like, a rap right. song the same as you're going to approach, like, I don't know, maybe an alternative punk song or alternative pop song or, you know, mm-hmm. a pop song. 
You know, you try to bring that back. Like, are there certain things that transfer over? A hundred percent, of course. But if you try to take it in the same lane, mm-hmm. now you, you over here, damn near creating a whole new style almost on accident because you're just running through it. <laughs> and then, bro, like, on the, flip side of this, on the flip side of this conversation too, bro, I was talking about, like, needing to evolve and it being a necessary evil, bro. I also think that, that conversation gets had enough. You feel me? Like, I think we're at a point to where, like, if you're an artist and you're genuinely trying to grow in the craft, you know you got to evolve, right? The part of the equation I don't think people talk about enough is the fact that, man, that shit is not easy, bro. Right? Like, to, to to try to make some different type of stuff and still, like, because I, I don't see people really try to switch lanes and it's like, <laughs> go back to the other lane, brother. You feel me? Like, <laughs> You're like, hey, you're you like you Hey, you good, bro? Ooh. <laughs> you like, oh yeah, hey, oh no, nice. yeah, bro. You, you meant to drop this? <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, but man. like, I, I truly feel like people don't talk about that part enough. That like, it's not an easy thing to do to 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 try to make something outside of your norm. You feel me? Yeah, the fear is justified. I agree. Like this fear is it should be it should be scary to do things that you know, require yeah. you to be uncomfortable, you know, and you might have to restart your whole yeah. lane at a point because like we said, you evolved out a person. Now you want to do a different type of music or a different type of, you know, right. expression, you know, and you might have to re-evolve. But that's what, that's what this is. Honestly, this is the art of creating yourself. You should live and you should be able to constantly create whoever you want to be. Bro, this conversation in itself is literally like a bottomless pit black hole, bro, because it's opening so many other possible topics. Because that that opens up a whole nother can of worms. Like, you feel me? When you get to a point where, like, you you really truly feel like, damn, I kind of want to rebrand and, like, really do a whole different take on how I was doing this artistry, bro. Mm -hmm. You really got to, like, weigh the pros and cons of, like, hmm, please myself and really, you know, do what I'm feeling, mm-hmm. but you got to remember, you still got supporters and fans and listeners to tend to as well. You feel me? And I think like that, that decision-making process literally beats people up every day, bro. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And that's why I always stress, bro. And I always tell people that like, while it's a process I'm still going through, bro, I always stress to people, bro, you have to do what you like, bro. And I think that makes the best music, bro. You feel me? But you can't teach everybody. You can't reach everybody. If you was that's yeah. that's that's a lesson sometimes people gotta learn on their own. Bro. Like I literally had to I had to sit down, bro, and like listen to stuff I was making, bro, or peep stuff I was writing and just be like, bro, like you're trying hella hard. You feel me to you feel me as opposed to letting it come and, and doing what you truly feel, bro. When you feel it, bro, that it does not feel like you're it's it's not you feel me a, a task to write, bro. You feel me like when it's something that you're truly that's it flows literally, bro. It's cliche because everybody says, it, but it literally flows out of you, bro. When you're really feeling it, and you're writing something that's like supposed to be written, bro. You feel me? Like this is mm-hmm. supposed to be on this notepad, bro. You feel me? Yeah, hundred percent. And on that same lane, almost like, do you feel like you are able to create outside of what you're currently going through, whether it be like emotions or like life experiences like sometimes the art literally is a reflection but sometimes it's like damn i was working on this whole project with a theme and everything and now like my real real life got turned upside down now i don't even know if i can be in this whole mindset anymore are you able to create through that or do you kind of have to like take a step back and be like yo i gotta i gotta make some other stuff right now i'll come back to this Honestly, it truly depends, bro, because I done, I done literally, you feel me, took it both directions. You feel mm. me? I done had times where I was working on something, you feel me, complete theme and, and concept out in my head, you know, that finished more than half of it. <laughs> and then life just takes a complete different turn, you feel me, as opposed to the music you was writing. So it's like, and I'm glad you said before you, why you were stating the question, I didn't like go hand to hand because it still does. You feel me? Like now I'm at a point where, damn, I done finished 70% of this project on a certain vibe. Do I work through and it's continue this vibe so I can put out what I know, you feel me, my my folks and my supporters are going to mess with because I wasn't doing it for no reason, you feel mm-hmm. me, it's still there, it's still a work of art, mm-hmm. it's just not where I'm at right now, so do I put that out or do I completely shift to where my head and where where my 
you feel me, what space I'm in right now. You feel me? And that's a that's again a daily battle and it beats people up, bro. You feel me? Cause it ain't it ain't an easy one. You feel me? Like, especially like for me personally, bro, like like I said, I done went both directions. So I done had all of this and then had to turn a completely new direction. And I'll be pissed off about it because it's like, bro, I ain't get all the way here to toss it. You feel me? Like you feel me? But it's like you also can't choose what curveballs get thrown at you and how like yo, yo, yo inspiration and how yo your muse changes, you feel me? And your situation in general. It's like literally shit that's out your control. The only thing you can control is how you go about the art from that point. How would you view stress as a factor in creating, right? Do you view it do you view it as a roadblock or do you view it as a motivator or do it depend on, you know? The actual stressor. I'm glad. I'm glad you. I'm glad you already caught on to the type of answers I give. You feel me? But it really, it really works for a lot of situations. But bro, like no bullshit. It's it's literally like situational, bro. You feel me? Because like, I don't had times where I legit, and I hate to use the word came, but I legit could not push through what I what I had going on and, and say fuck that and do music. You feel me? Like it, it literally. There, I urge all artists. You feel me? And, and some artists are gonna hate me for this because it is this this content heavy and consistency you feel me is the most important thing as era we in right now but artists bro sometimes you gotta say fuck music bro you feel me like excuse my language i'm doing a lot of cursing but you literally gotta no. say fuck music you good time, bro you know what i'm saying bro like because that you 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 feel me you start tending to to the craft more than you do yourself bro and yo yo mental and yo how you feeling bro yeah, you might get some bangers out of it. You might get, you feel me, some cool productivity out of it. You feel me? But long run, bro, you feel me? You you gonna, you gonna wish you would have took the time for yourself to sit down and, you know, you feel me, whatever whatever that stress is, whatever that roadblock is at the moment, you feel me? You gonna wish you would have sat down to deal with it. You feel me? Bottom line, bro. So, I mean, I would say, like, to answer your question a little more directly, I would say, like, yeah, stress is a roadblock with, uh, with music, you feel me, but that's only if that's only if you you feel me are a hundred percent only devoting yourself to be an artist. You feel me, and like you said, it's easy to forget mm -hmm. that you're a person too. You feel me? It's easy for listeners to forget we're people, but it's easy for us to forget we're also people. You feel me? So you literally gotta like get yourself that that uh get yourself the luxury of you feel me some 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 downtime or some you feel me some some R and R. You feel me? You need it sometimes. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, don't get caught up in the, what, like the hamster wheel, or like the rat race, or what you want to call it. Like, Bruh. you got to remember the bigger picture than that. You got to, I, I don't, I don't like, I like the word balance, but I understand that, you know, sometimes you have to foresee temporary balance to try to get to the mm -hmm. next level. But when we talk in like bigger picture, you need the balance. You need the, the marathon yeah. approach, the balance of like, yo. And I always say this and like every time I talk to, you know, like one of my friends who makes music, or like, I talk to Danny all the time. Right. And I'm like, there's gotta be like a marathon approach. It gotta be a marathon, but you gotta want to be here the next 10 years from this moment, not from seven years ago. Not if you started five years ago, like 10 years from this, moment, from every day, you know, from every day, you gotta be like, okay, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking 10 years ahead right now. You feel me? Like, what can I do? That's going to you feel mm -hmm. me at least. It's just gonna at least set the groundwork for to be at, for me to be able to be here and be relevant. You feel me and be making music at my highest level in ten years. You feel me? Like yeah, I want to also make sure about right now. But you feel me? Right now, it's setting that. You feel me? So you you definitely got to be in that mindset. And that's you feel me. And that's I'm gonna throw in the disclaimer too that that's definitely if this is what you're chasing as your career and you if this is really the craft that you're selling. Oh, yeah. You feel me? Because if you're making music for fun, bro, you ain't got to have no marathon. You can drop music every three years. You can drop one song every two years, you feel me? And you're going to be okay. But this is for artists who are taking this seriously, and this is their craft, and you feel me? They're trying to do something with it, you know, on a, on a bigger scale. You, you feel me? You got to have a marathon approach, bro, you feel me? And, and that's not to say that you ain't going to have time periods where you, you feel me? Like I, like I spoke about earlier, you feel me? Where you just can't really have that approach because you feel me? Life happens, right? Mm -hmm. You feel me? You can't control that. 100%. Like, to tie it all together, it's like, I like to think of it like a career almost as like an art museum. 
you know, like sometimes I'd be like going through people's like pages on IG and like some people are like, I don't know if it's like a funny thing or if it's like a, um, you know, a purposeful thing, but like, oh, art museum as like their, their artist or their um, creative platform profile. And I'm like, yeah. honestly, like that's kind of genius. Cause when you look back at it, like I want to have, like if this if this is what I did for the next ten years, I want to have I don't know if I did twenty interviews a year, right? For the next ten years, what is that? Two hundred mm-hmm. interviews. I want to have forty bangers. Like yo, did right. you see that episode? You feel me with KD? I'm like that was a banger. Or like yeah. three months down the line, like I want to have forty bangers, right? Where people can be like, yo, like X percent of his catalog or this person, this part of his catalog, or whatever, this mm-hmm. is art, like, in the grand scheme of his career. Yeah. This is the portion of his career where he just did not miss. Bro, and you crazy. really got to set them goals for yourself, too, though, bro, to, like, you mm-hmm. feel me, to even be able to see that, you feel me, that light at the end of the tunnel, that is, you feel me, the 10th year, you feel me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you literally got to, damn, yeah. I want to make sure that I'm doing this so I can, you feel me, like, that's, you, you got to do it. And do you think you can hear almost, I mean, it's different when you're creating your art, obviously, and you know what's going on in your life. But do you think as an artist, you're able to hear when somebody maybe goes through something, but, you know, already has this vibe, already has this theme, already has this concept for a project and pushes through it. Like, yo, you can tell when some of these songs weren't made at the same time or some of these songs weren't made in like the same mindset. Like, have you personally think that you um, develop this type of ear to that? I think the best way I can probably put it is that I definitely don't catch it and wouldn't catch it every time. Mm-hmm. However, I definitely, there, there's instances where like, it's like glaring. You feel me like, <laughs> oh yeah, I can tell these were made like it, they're two completely different. You feel me like, you don't let this sit for a second and yeah. take it back with a whole different, cause you feel me, you can, you might hear a couple extra tracks that got a little different balance to you for me. Like, yeah. oh, you, you was turned here. You feel me? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, I mean, uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, it's, it's kind of 50, 50 on, you know, being able to really catch that and whatnot, because sometimes, I mean, people do pretty well with masking the fact that they done sat on something for three years. <laughs> you feel me? While they was trying to get it right. You know, yeah. you know I mean? sometimes it's, it's really not detectable and it just ends up, working how it needed to you feel me okay and took enough time off to where i could come back and essentially pick up where i left off you know mm. yeah i feel that because that's i know i mean there's there's songwriting but i feel like when you even get to like the bigger portion of like themes and like album themes or like project themes or like mm-hmm. EP, whatever you want to call it like whatever work of a compilation of art is in the music form like to have songs relate to the theme and be produced in a specific order like that is even the next level of like things to just be aware of when you're trying to bro. feel a certain vibe bro i'm telling you bro can, while we on this thing bro can i ask you a question bro hey do you feel up. like bro and i and i, I kind of i feel like you have to include both mainstream and artists who are not on and don't got that much you feel me of a name yet so mm-hmm. i will even though i i'm less talking about the uh the industry artists you feel me but like i said inevitably i gotta include them their artists <laughs> but the question is like bro you feel like making conceptual music and projects and, and like you feel me you, or even conceptual singles you feel me just music in general is kind of like a I don't want to say a dying, a dying art, you feel me? But I feel like it's definitely not a, a, a as much of a premium put on it no more, in my opinion. You feel me? Like, I think, like you mentioned, you used the word compilation, but I feel like nine out of 10, eight out of 10 albums, if I'm being generous, that come out now, and that's from people that's on and people who are not on, you feel me? Are literally like compilation albums, bro. It's like folks were just pulling throwaways out the tuck, you feel me, bro? I'm like, this shit would be cool. People would vibe with this, you know? <laughs> yeah, throw a cover art on it and wrap it real nice, you know, and like have a vibe and we're just we'll call oh, it a, we'll call it an album. You know, it's really a mixtape, we'll call it an album, you know. <laughs> I mean Literally. Yeah. Literally. That's interesting because I'm I'm more of a I don't want to say an old school hip hop head, because then that's not 
true, but I like the old school, old school concept of, you know, the rap album, right? The hip hop album. Like, mm-hmm. yo, we're going to, we're going to go in the studio. We're going to be in the studio. We're going to work with one producer. We're going to get nine to 12 tracks, whatever. We're going to get in there. We're going to tell 17 yeah. stories. We're going to have blah, blah, blah on it. And we're going to actually make it like it was a piece of art. I'm personally, I'm personally a fan of that, but I do believe like what you're saying, it is more scarce and more scarce. And like damn near, damn near doesn't happen. Like, is it marketed? Like it still happens, bro. Yeah. But I I don't really, I see it. Even if I were to say mainstream, I mean, I see it way more from independent artists just because it's, less Mm -hmm. crucial you do something specific as an independent artist but like even from like mainstream artists who tell you they're doing it i don't i don't really see it i i don't try too hard if i gotta try really hard to listen to the concept that you've already explained to me and i don't understand it off like third fourth listen then you just threw some songs together probably (laughs) and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong it's okay you drop you dropped a compilation album, brother. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, don't get, hey, don't get mad at me because you know you dropped the compilation album. Like, I get it. The grand scheme of it all is, it is really hard to make a good album. Mm-hmm. You know, is it hard to make a good compilation of songs too? Yes, but it is at least twice, if not three times, as hard to three sit times. there with the concept and have it be communicated correctly or not, maybe not even correctly, like 85, 75% correctly. And you threw in some Easter eggs and whatever, you know, like the real fans who've been listening from the get go know what you're talking about. But that in itself is getting harder and harder to do because Mm -hmm. in my opinion, the audience, the listener, their, their sound is being saturated so much that they're developing an ear for things that are the opposite of what an album is traditionally. Bro, it's like people literally now are aiming to make like the compilation shits, bro. Like you feel me? People are hearing those blow up, bro. And they're like, hold up. Is this mm-hmm. the freaking blueprint, bro? <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, is this, is this what I'm supposed to be doing, bro? And so now you got, you feel me, I hope uh-huh. that the people that are who are aspiring to be on or that are signed and on trying to make stuff that's just a bunch of songs that don't got nothing to do with each other, you feel me, but are bangers. Granted, if you, you can't take away from somebody if it's a banger, you feel me, it's a banger, you feel me? You could have a 12-song <laughs> project, 12 for 12, all bangers, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Bigger picture. Having a bunch of bangers on a project don't make it no less of a compilation album if it's just a bunch of tracks thrown together. You feel me? Like bottom line, bro. You feel me? I, I, I can't. I can't. can't you feel me? It doesn't make it a well put together body of work. You know? it's, just, <laughs> it's just twelve good songs, bro. It's just twelve good songs. That is like shoot. Maybe they might need to just start putting out greatest hits. Like, hey, this is the twenty twenty two greatest hits. Throw bro. a title on it. Start, start early. Start yeah, early, that bro. That might be the blueprint right there. <laughs> like, hey, you know, like, that don't, don't overthink it. Like, yo, you made eight man. songs in eight months or, you know, 12 songs in 24 months. Hey, this is the greatest hit. These are 12 best songs. Tell me, bro. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm going to still look for that deeper meaning or that connection, you know. Cause I'm you and I'm I'm a sucker for like things that just flow, things that just look like they're supposed to be in the same room. Like ah, oh, like you know, yeah. like look at the ambiance. And it flows yeah. better. <laughs> like you can tell, it flows twenty times better, bro. Like, <laughs> crazy, crazy. But uh, I like to thank you for coming on. You know, giving your it's perspective. Safe. I mean, we're gonna have to have you on again. It's just. We think too similar in terms of like the there's hey, no yeah, black and white. Hey, it's a hey, bunch hey, of gray in this world. <laughs> so hey, we, we, we gonna have to we gonna have to run it back one time. But I got one more question for you, dog. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. I mean, if, if you watched any of the videos, 
you know you know the questions uh, uh hopefully you get a little little bit of thought so i'm, I'm ready yeah. for you to spit it how it is when it's all said and done what do you want to be remembered by when you leave this earth i want to be remembered by you feel me? You turn on my music and you literally can can remember it for one your first time hearing it. You feel me? You can remember it the the first time that you really felt like damn, like you felt like he rapped this from my perspective. You feel me? Like music is is to me. You feel me? It's a it's a form of expression, but at the same time, it's like a real healing tool. You feel me? So like I just want to be remembered for uh, as somebody that helped people to get through that. You feel me? And be able to do that. You feel me? Like. That's definitely something that's 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 big to me and damn near how I want to remember just as somebody who who was able to help people get through their times while simultaneously trying to get through mine. You feel me? Two birds, one stone. <laughs> time, you me? So I mean, I definitely just want to. You feel me? And I say I want to be remembered for for the skill of the music itself, but I mean that's kind of like that's neither here nor there. You feel me? The 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 mm. big picture is you feel me touching people. So you feel me? I just want to. Uh, I, I at least hope by the time I go, they can say I did that, you feel me? And there's enough people who done felt, you know, me through the music. They still can, even when I'm gone. I rock with it. I rock with it. Two sides of the same coin, just just trying to get through it. Just trying I'm to telling get you, through bro, it. We all are. We all are. Yeah. And I appreciate you having me, uh, too, bro. For real, bro. We definitely, uh, uh, I'm definitely down for a part two whenever uh, whenever the invite is available. Yeah. Right? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, like thank you again for coming on. Like thank everybody decided to listen in this platform podcast interview in some way, shape, or form. Um, please support the channel in any way, whether it be a follow, subscribe, go listen to KD. He's fire. He's a storytelling. So all that compilation stuff that we spent fifteen minutes talking about, throw it out the window. <laughs> you here? You here for an album? You here for actual masterclass on? Yeah, we got a concept going on. You know, you're my biggest fan. <laughs> tell me what's your favorite song. Come on, tell me. <laughs> tell I thank you, everybody. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. I thank everybody for coming through again. Um, yeah, yes, go, go, go. Listen to your favorite artists and live through what they're living through at the same time, and hopefully, you know, mm-hmm. you relate to it. Any last words, Katie? Hey, you feel me? Stay positive as much as you can. You feel me? Protect your peace. You feel me? And artists, you mm-hmm. feel me? Getting creative spaces as often as you can. That's it. All right. I mean, I almost forgot. I, I got to let you get your little show off. Now, what you what you got coming up, dog? What you working on? Oh, bro, we're working, bro. We're working. Like, I don't want to I, I tell too much, you feel me? Just because I haven't even had my first drop of the year yet. But I promise y'all. Okay. We have been cooking, bro. And there's a lot of brewing, bro. And we got visuals coming out. We got projects coming out, bro. Mm. Like it's, it's a lot of work to be, uh, you feel me, put out and, and released to the world. So I promise y'all we got y'all soon, bro. Big things coming on the way. 2022 yes. to 2032 and beyond. Come on, bro. Easy call. <laughs> Easy call. <laughs> Easy call. All right, y'all. Peace. There you go. Get disconnected. Can you hear me? Uh, this is, yep. We still here. We feel me. Welcome to Internet Pod. All right. <laughs> you're here. You're here. You're <laughs> oh, my nigga shouldn't have cut off. Am I out again? <laughs> What's up, Brett? <laughs> My guy. <laughs> My hair ain't going through it right now, bro. I'm sorry. Are you good? Sorry, you, you all good. No, we, oh, we here man. with it. As long as we, as long as we bounce back from it, it ain't no L, bro. You know, hey, I'm, I'm gonna have real fun. I'm gonna let you know. <laughs>